This morning for residents in Tangibahoe Parish. Here one resident described the moments the storm hit her home. Also, American Trail Recall organizers and the, the Times PBUN reached a deal in court. Find out when the names from that recall petition will be released. And the New Orleans City Council Budget Review Board will consider moving money to pay for new city programs. We'll give you the details. You're watching Good Morning New Orleans. Thanks for waking up with us on Good Morning New Orleans. I'm Stephanie Chainock. And I'm Zach Labe. Let's go ahead and start this morning with meteorologist Brooke Laser. Brooke, we saw some damage we just showed in Tangibahoe Parish. Uh, not much here, but we did see a lot of rain. Yes, good morning. We did have a tornado warning there, so we are going to be waiting for that National Weather Service survey team information to come back this morning. They'll likely set out in just a couple hours. Your forecast first brought to you by New Orleans Rose. Most of us spared the worst of this system as it continues marching east. So right now we are drying out still a couple lingering showers around and we'll see that for the majority of the south shore through at least the next hour or so. But the severe threat is well beyond our viewing area. So the line of storms has weakened in intensity as it's pushed east and we knew that would happen with the higher risk area being off to our west. Right now temperatures are still on the way down actively falling. So anywhere from those 50s to 60s. We do see our dew points in the 50s as well. Your beach camera at Beau is nice and quiet and the 24 hour temperature change is clearly larger off to our west and that's where the cold front's already passed. So you can identify it with the color difference on the map here. About 20 degrees cooler in Shreveport than New Orleans proper. Over the course of your day today, we'll still be relatively warm, a little bit above average for February. Topping out in the upper 60s, closer to 70s, but changes are in the forecast for tomorrow. Let's check on traffic. It is 501 and traffic is brought to you by Chip four stall, so we're right here in the Kenner area with lots of green on the map near MSY. No issues there if you happen to be flying in or out this morning. Our current traffic towards the Mississippi Gulf Coast looks good as well. No problems with the twin spans, just taking your traditional seven minutes to get across either side. Otherwise, as you are heading a little bit further towards Mandeville and Covington, the bridge is looking good too, so no problems with fog on the causeway as we head over towards the south shore. We'll keep you posted as the morning goes on. Have a great day today. All right, thank you, Brooke. Well, this morning, residents in the village of Tangibahoa are, are assessing damage from last night's storms. The Tangibahoa Sheriff's Office says that the area is now impassable. So along the Tangibahoa Road, cars are covered with insulation. Walls are even ripped off. Several power lines are also down in the area, and one family who was home at the time of the storm says that they can't believe this happened, and even not even one week after purchasing their brand new mobile home. Well, I ain't even always moved in yet. I just purchased a new trailer and it's, I've been moving. So maybe stay like one night. I, I'm not even all the way in. And this happened. Well, I was just sitting on the couch. Um, and I was screaming my daughter's name. I hear something like a whistle or a train come. All kind of stuff was just hitting the trailer. So, I mean, all my family live right around here. So I was calling everybody to see was they okay. Then that's when my aunt said that my cousin trailer had flipped with her and her kids in it. So when it flipped there, like all the windows was breaking in my new home and like insulation was coming from everywhere and the boards and stuff was coming through the trailer. And the sheriff's office reports that there were injuries from the storm, but luckily none of them were life threatening. The National Weather Service says a team will be out later on today to survey that damage. And new this morning, two men are dead in Jefferson Parish after a shooting in Marrero. The Jefferson Parish Sheriff's Office says around 930 last night, deputies found two men with gunshot wounds inside a home in the 2600 block of Mesa Drive. Both men died at the scene. Deputies believe one man shot the other before taking his own life. No further information is available at this time. And a shooting in New Orleans East kills two people and injures three more, including two young children. Police say it happened around 6 Wednesday evening in the 11,700 block of Sheffinter Highway. One woman died at the scene. Another man and woman were taken to the hospital where the man later died. Also, a three-year-old and eight-year-old who also had injuries from that shooting had been relocated about four miles away on Arcadia Lane near Hain Boulevard. They were taken to the hospital and are expected to be okay. No further information is available at this time. And new numbers from the NOPD show violent crime in New Orleans is trending down, but other crime is on the rise. According to the NOPD, murder is down 15% from last year. 
Aggravated assault, rape and simple robbery are also down, but home burglaries are up and car thefts remain high with 842 so far this year. Mayor Cantrell says Police Superintendent Michelle Woodford assigned a special task force to address those issues. These are things that um, the superintendent is laser focused on and we are just starting. We are seeing uh, trends moving in the right direction. Although still high, we're seeing results based on that work that's happening. And this year, there have been only 28 reported carjackings compared to the 707 last year. Business burglaries are also up 30% this year. And organizers of the recall effort against Mayor Latoya Cantrell will turn over the names on the petition after the deadline to collect the signatures has passed. Recall organizers were fighting the Times Picayune in court, claiming it was a privacy issue. The Times Picayune argued the name should be part of should not be part of the public, or rather, they argued it should be part of the public record. But ultimately, both sides came to an agreement. A good settlement is when everybody is a little happy and a little disappointed. Uh, and I think that what happened today was a win for public records and a win for the public. And the deadline for that petition is going to be on Ash Wednesday. That's February 22nd, and that's when the newspaper will have the right to publish all of the names. And this morning, the New Orleans City Council's Budget Committee will consider giving $1.9 million to the Mayor's Workforce Development Office to fund an increase in youth participation. Board members will also consider transferring nearly $4 million to the Department of Sanitation for proposed settlement with Metro Services. Also on the agenda, a plan to allocate $100,000 to the City Health Department to provide gun locks. That meeting begins at 10 this morning. And the NOPD and the Office of Gun Violence Prevention are holding a free gun safety class. The class will provide residents information on statistics from across the country on ways to stay safe while owning a firearm. It will take place at Joe Brown Recreation Center from 6 until 8 tonight. And happening today, the Orleans Parish School Board will meet to finalize redistricting maps. Board members spent the last month hearing public comments on the proposed maps. Today, they will also hear a presentation on gun safety at schools from a group called Moms Demand Action. Just last month, a student was shot at Booker T. Washington High School, and another student brought a gun to school at Kit Believe Charter School. Today's meeting begins at 5.30. Now to a traffic alert for drivers in Mid-City this morning. Several lanes of Bienville Avenue and North Broad Street will close starting at 7 a.m. The outside lanes will be closed for crews to work on a utility line. Traffic control signs and measures will be in place and the closure is expected to last until 5 tomorrow evening. And coming up, the parade routes during carnival season are packed. Find out how the NOPD plans to keep children safe during Mardi Gras. And good morning, New Orleans. We're waking up right now much quieter after a round of storms came through. That coldest air filtering in details on how cold it gets up next.
days away from Fat Tuesday with a full slate of parades this coming weekend. So here are just a few. Saturday Uptown, the Legion of Mars rolls at 1130. Also, the crew of Pontchartrain rolls at 1 and the Knights of Sparta at 530. And in Slidell, the crew to Pauls of Old Town rolls at 10 in the morning. And Chalmette, the Knights of Nemesis rolls at 1 p.m. And in Metairie, Mad Hatters rolls at 5. All right, and during carnival season, the parade routes can, of course, get crowded, and sometimes it's hard keeping loved ones in arm's reach. Especially those young kids, so that's why the NOPD will be distributing identification bracelets for kids for them to wear. They'll contain contact information so officers can safely return children to their parents or guardian at either of the three meeting spots on your screen. The program begins this Friday, and the bracelets are reusable, and they will last throughout the season. Good morning and a happy Thursday. We are that much closer to your weekend and right now temperatures across the area have dropped and they'll only continue to drop because a cold front is on its way through. So over the course of last night, we were dealing with those storms at ahead of the main boundary. Lots of flash flood warnings and a couple of severe thunderstorm concerns as well. But we just saw that one tornado warning in Tangipahoa, which likely did lead to an actual tornado with all those mobile homes damage. We'll of course have more information on results as the National Weather Survey teams deploy this morning. So we're falling from those mid 60s to about 60 itself over the next couple hours. Afternoon highs will rise eventually into the upper 60s near 70 on both sides of the lake. So you can anticipate a relatively below average comparison on the rest of the week, but still above average conditions for the month of February. Wind speeds right now are highest in New Orleans proper where they're in the teens. Otherwise, we are consistently seeing about five to nine miles an hour out of the west, but transitioning to the north. So our future cast gust right now look to be in the single digits for the majority of your day, if not right around that low double digit mark. Morning lows tomorrow will be in the upper 40s to about 50 on both sides of the lake. You'll see a little bit of a difference. So 53 to 54 on the south shore in the river parishes and then mid 50s to upper 50s across the rest of the area. If you're headed out tomorrow to parades for the first big kickoff of carnival season, we'll see Ocean, Cleopatra and Allah all rolling in the 50s. So you'll want to bundle up without a doubt. Make sure you have the purple, green and gold layers because on top of this, we're going to have those winds out of the north in the 10 to 15 mile per hour range, which makes it feel much colder. Here's your family graph forecast again tomorrow and Saturday. Really gorgeous conditions. We'll see mostly sunshine, but it will be breezy. So you might be cold, especially if you step into the shade. And then in the overnight time frame on Saturday and Sunday, we're waking up in the 30s or 40s. So that being said, especially Sunday morning, we have the possibility for some freezing conditions. Here's what you can expect as we head into Monday as well. A little bit of lingering cool air, so that's where you might have to think about the people, pets, and plants. Here's your temperature outlook for the next 6 to 10 days. We're going to continue staying warmer than normal, and we do have a bit of a stormier pattern starting to roll in for next weekend's parade. So it looks like every 2 to 3 days we could be dealing with some downpours. Temperatures will be above normal for the month of February, meaning at least a little bit warmer, but still probably wet as well. We'll keep you posted, of course. Let's check on traffic. It's 515 and traffic is brought to you by Chip Forstall. So right now we are looking at a semi truck that has jackknifed and this is leading to some issues. You don't see a whole lot of traffic surrounding. This is near Franklin Avenue. So it's I-10 at Franklin and we are not seeing a whole lot of traffic near that off ramp. We'll continue to get more information on this situation as the morning goes on. But right now it's not leading to a huge delay there. So we'll watch it closely as we head into Metairie, mostly green on the map, an eight minute drive from Causeway to Chapatulas and then over towards the Superdome. No problems so far either. Looking good there, even across the Crescent City connection to the West Bank. Looking good as well. So we'll keep you posted as the morning goes on again. We do still have slick roads. Be careful as you're driving.
I'm Josh Danziger with WhereYouAt.com and Where you at Magazine. Oh, it's carnival time. This weekend brings the start of the traditional parade season, as well as great live music, the Super Bowl, and Valentine's Day celebrations. Here are Where you At's weekend picks. First, Metairie's favorite Mardi Gras celebration, Family Gras, is returning tomorrow and Saturday. This free event has many activities for the whole family, like an arts market, kids court, and great spots to catch all the parades. This year's musical headliners include Rick Springfield, The Jacksons, Haley Witters, and others. Next, the massively popular Shorty Gras, presented by the Carew Ferret, is returning this year to Mardi Gras World on Saturday night. Grab that special valentine and dance the night away to the tunes of Trombone Shorty, as well as other musical headliners, including Flo Rida and the Rebirth Brass Band. On Saturday night, Loyola grad and world famous rapper g Easy makes his return to the Crescent City for Pygmalion Fest at the Sugar Mill. The ball takes place after the crew of Pygmalion Parade and features Manny Fresh. Visit the crew of Pygmalion's website for advanced tickets. Finally, get ready for Super Bowl Sunday as the Chiefs take on the Eagles. Head out to Manning Sports Bar and Grill and catch the game on one of the best sports bars in New Orleans. With two 13-foot mega screens and a recliner section, you'll be definitely watching the game in style. Grab a cold beer and enjoy one of Manning's tasty burgers. For more ideas on things to do this carnival season, pick up the new issue of Where You At magazine at restaurants, coffee shops, and retail outlets all over town. Or read it online now by logging on to whereyat.com and clicking on Latest Issue.
Coming up, a suspect in a fatal shooting outside a New Orleans Walmart is in custody. Hear why the NOPD says the public played a role in catching the suspected shooter. And Mayor Cantrell is speaking out after the DA's office failed to meet a key prosecution deadline. Find out why she thinks it may be a sign of a bigger issue. Thanks for waking up with us on Good Morning New Orleans. I'm Stephanie Chainoff. And I'm Zach Labe. Let's go ahead and get this morning started off with meteorologist Brooke Laser. Hey, good, good morning. morning. Hey, did you all wake up last night as a result of the storms? Luckily, I did not. I did wake up a little bit to some of that thunder. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very active out there. It was. We ended up with a lesser concern than we could have had because it was a pretty high end risk for some areas, but Dan Bahoa looks like it got the worst of it and they were included in that higher risk category. So we are going to continue to watch as the NWS deploys its storm survey teams this morning for damage assessments in the area. Right now we are waking up cooler as temperatures remain in the 60s. We've actually been watching temperatures drop consistently over the last couple of hours. So we're going to continue to see that as these winds pick up out of the north or northwest. Our afternoon highs today still unseasonably warm in the upper 60s, close to 70, but about 10 degrees cooler than we were at the same time yesterday on both sides of the lake. So the wind speeds right now are in the teens in New Orleans proper, otherwise single digits. And of course, we see that transition out of the west to the north because we've got this coming right off the pole. So you're gonna have to remember that while getting dressed for tomorrow's parades. It will be chilly out there on the round uptown St. Charles Avenue. Of course, as we continue towards tomorrow morning, you're waking up in the 50s, some 40s even north of the lake. We'll see 50s to 60s on the south shore, mostly 50s, and then we'll rise into the 60s as the morning goes on. But by parade time, you're back in the 50s with that northerly wind. Let's check on traffic. It's 529, 530 now. And you continue to wake up with very little issues on the road. So remember, they are a little slick because the rain did come through. But otherwise, we don't have any fog and we are seeing mostly green on the map here. Eight minutes as you are headed towards Metairie from the CBD. Looking good near I-10-610 as well. We'll continue to see mostly your traditional drive times across the area as we head into 6 o'clock. But we will keep you posted if anything changes. Have a great, safe morning. Thanks, Brooke. Well, the NOPD has arrested the suspected gunman in a fatal shooting outside a Gentilly Walmart on Tuesday. After a 24 hour search, police found and arrested Gregory Woods in New Orleans East. They say Woods targeted the victim at a bus stop in front of the Walmart store on Chef Highway. Detectives credit technology and tips for Woods' arrest, which they say helped the NOPD to keep its promise to the victim's family. The sister, the cousin, and other family members who were out on the scene that day, there was one thing that we promised them. We would do our best to find out who did this to their family member, and that brings us to where we are today. We do have an apprehension. We're pleased that we brought justice in the swiftest way possible. And there will be a prayer service outside the Walmart later today. It starts at 7 this morning. And Mayor Cantrell is responding after the Orleans Parish DA Jason Williams missed the deadline to prosecute two teenage suspects as adults. The teens are accused of carjacking and shooting 59 year old Scott Toops last July. One of them was a Bridge City escapee. Toops is still recovering from those wounds after spending months in the ICU. Williams had promised to try the two teen suspects as adults, but the change came and went. The chance came and went rather. And here's what the mayor had to say about it. When you have been uh, identifying issues um, and, and breakdowns uh, within the system, uh, it is frustrating that now uh, we're starting to um, understand the overall impact. This is something that we've been talking about. And it's unfortunate that it has to take this to happen for people to pay attention. The DA's office released a statement saying the system is not set up to make an informed decision within the limited time period. He also said that the indictments were rejected accidentally. Well, during Mardi Gras, horses are everywhere in New Orleans and they're a big crowd pleaser during parades. But after Mardi Gras, their futures are usually uncertain. So this story from WGNO's Lip, uh, Jordan Lippincott. Here at Cascade Stables in Audubon Park, 15 Mardi Gras parade horses are making themselves at home. Well, a temporary home. 
The director of the Humane Society of Louisiana, Jeff Dorson, says every carnival season, crews secure horses from outside the city for their parades. So they bring in horses from a horse broker. They stay here during the parade, and if it weren't for us, they would go back to the broker and be resold probably at auction and possibly for slaughter. And although the horses are in great care here at Cascade Stables, not all of them can stay past Mardi Gras Day. Unfortunately, we don't have the space, and it's horses, it's no secret, do cost money to maintain, and we are a small business as well. So maybe these horses can find a permanent home at your home. Since 2017, the Humane Society has found homes for more than 70 parade horses through their Mardi Gras Horses Adoption Program. We thought since they, you know, made us feel happy and part of our carnival season, we owed it to these wonderful creatures to ensure that they have a good future. The staff at Cascade Stables say their partnership with the Humane Society makes all this possible. And that's the goal. We want to find all these horses good homes and get them in a better situation than they were before. Jordan Lippincott, WGNO News. Well, coming up after the break, stay tuned. We will have a look at the latest happening in Hollywood in today's entertainment news. And good morning, New Orleans. We are waking up right now coming off of last night's stormy pattern with cooler air behind it. Details on the weekend forecast are next.
Coming back to the big screen, CEO Bob Iger announced that the animated films Frozen, Toy Story, and Zootopia are getting sequels, and an Avatar experience is coming to Disneyland in California. The news came as Disney announced its latest earnings and layoffs of 7,000 are coming. Disney's the parent company of ABC News. There's Tom. Oh. Fans seem to be loving the new film 80 for Brady. It's currently at 90% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, but there's one scene they didn't get to see. Actor and Olympic skier Gus Kenworthy told Variety this week that his gay kiss was cut from the film, theorizing that maybe middle America didn't want to see it. But director Kyle Marvin tells me it was cut for time and no other reason. There's so many great performers whose scenes got cut. There's people whose entire things got cut, you know, so... Unfortunately, I think it's just a product of uh, a movie getting cut down for pace and time. Marvin says he hopes people go to see the football film this weekend to get pumped for the Super Bowl. I feel you creeping, I can see it from my shadow. Akon smacking his way into the Billion Views Club. The video for his 2006 song Smack That with Eminem has now been viewed more than a billion times on YouTube. Also, a new YouTube billionaire, the 1990 power ballad Wind of Change by The Scorpions. And happy birthday to Michael B. Jordan. The Creed and Black Panther star is 36 today, while The Irishman and Goodfellas star Joe Pesci is 80. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Good morning and a happy Thursday. The time now is 539 and we are waking up much cooler after a front came through, but you haven't seen the coolest air just yet. It's certainly on its way right now. 63 out there. We still have a couple lingering showers. Humidity values in the 84 percentile range. We are going to watch that number come down considerably headed towards your weekend. So the beach camera at Beau Rivage is not exactly inviting just yet, but give it some time. Our 24 hour temperature change, of course, already anywhere from about 4 to 17 degrees different. So clearly it's much larger over towards the west. This is what you can expect for the weekend. Beautiful conditions, huge improvements. 54 on Saturday with mostly sunshine and Sunday looks fantastic as well. So any Super Bowl watch party plans you may have look good. Our temperatures are clearly different from Shreveport to New Orleans, 20 degrees. You can point out the front, right? It's lingering behind that round of storms that came through. So our area hasn't quite gotten in on this yet, but we will here shortly. Hour by hour takes you into the morning with temperatures falling so prepare accordingly getting dressed layers will be best those showers mostly starting to end here shortly clouds with us nonetheless we'll continue to see those winds out of the north ramping up in the teens across a couple of spots and tomorrow morning is going to be cooler but this afternoon we're still in the upper 60s close to 70 degrees on both sides of the lake so that being said it's going to be above average for this time of year here's your current wind speed look Zero miles an hour in Bogalus and Baton Rouge, as well as Lafayette. But we do see those six to teen ranges across the rest of our area. So the future cast wind gusts at the moment are just going to stay relatively quiet in the single digits for the most part. We come into the afternoon time frame with some clearing clouds. And by tonight, most of those have cleared off. Tomorrow morning, looks like all the rain that was showing up on the future cast earlier in the week is going to stay off the coast. So we're not seeing that as you're waking up anymore. And then, of course, we don't have it with us for the parades either, which is good news as you're headed out to the route. So make sure you bundle up. At that point, we are going to have those winds and the core temperatures in the 50s. Here's what you're waking up to tomorrow. 40 and 50s on the north shore. We'll see the 50s consistently across the south shore. Your parades, again, going to be chilly out there, especially if you're up, maybe off at the ground, or if you're downtown in between buildings, a wind tunnel always without a doubt. So 50s consistently, those winds anywhere from 10 to 15 miles an hour, and then you got to factor in the wind that could come from the tunnels even further. Our family ground forecast looks gorgeous for both Friday and Saturday. Of course, Sunday is the Super Bowl, so that's why it won't be happening then. And this is when many spots are waking up near the freezing mark, and that'll carry into the start of next week. So make sure that you are prepared accordingly. Might be right around the freezing mark, if not at that 32 degree spot. Temperature outlook for the next six to 10 days is warmer than normal nonetheless. And here's your seven day forecast. Again, those rain chances are definitely going to trend down. Seth? Thanks, Brooke. Coming up, Southwest Airlines executives are scheduled to meet with lawmakers today. We'll tell you the latest details surrounding the holiday travel chaos.
Today, Southwest Airlines will be answering questions on Capitol Hill. The airline company had to cancel thousands of flights because of a scheduling nightmare. ABC's Andrea Fuji E has the details. This morning, a Southwest Airlines executive is set to be grilled on Capitol Hill. They said we can't help you go home. Southwest Chief Operating Officer will testify before Congress about the airline's holiday travel meltdown when it was forced to cancel nearly 17,000 flights, stranding 2 million passengers at the end of December. The Christmas was just ruined. This was the worst Christmas ever. Representatives from the Pilots Union also expected to testify and bring evidence of the chaos, including this message it says was displayed on a cockpit computer showing that dispatchers did not know which crews were on what planes. The message reading, Skedge is asking to confirm who is operating this flight. It's a mess down here. And we were told we aren't allowed to walk over and talk to them. The airline blamed cancellations on a winter storm and scheduling issues. But pilots also point to outdated technology. They argue since 2011, Southwest averaged one major system failure every year and a half. They're using processes and IT from the 1990s when we were an airline less than a quarter of the size. Southwest CEO has taken responsibility for the mess. There's just no way almost to apologize enough because we love our customers. Customers. We love our people. The airline says it's improving software and making investments to better prepare for cold weather. But the Department of Transportation is vowing to penalize the airline and investigate whether it overscheduled during the holidays. On top of canceled flight refunds, Southwest promised each affected customer frequent flyer points equal to about $300. The debacle cost the airline an estimated $825 million. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. In today's Tech Bites, Twitter's expansion. The company now says that subscribers of Twitter Blue can post tweets with up to 4,000 characters, far higher than the current limit of 280. And it says all users, even non-subscribers, will be able to read the longer messages. Google Maps just rolled out an immersive view feature in five cities, including New York, LA, and San Francisco. It uses AI to offer a detailed perspective, and the feature can help plan a trip with a deeper understanding of a city's buildings in addition to information like traffic and weather. Finally, some of Nintendo's classic Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games are coming to its Switch Online service. They include hits like Super Mario, The Legend of Zelda, and Tetris. More titles will be added in the future. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day.
Good morning and a happy Thursday. The time now is 552 and we are waking up to different conditions than last night after a storm system came through. Of course, much colder air filtering in consistently. So we are going to see our humidity values on the way down over the next couple of days. Not a lot of humidity in your forecast for the weekend period. As we continue towards our weekend, the 40s are going to be your trend overnight, especially as we approach Saturday and Sunday morning, Friday the 50s, Saturday the 50s for highs, lots of sunshine out there. So nice breezy conditions will be with us tomorrow, but it will be chilly. If you're not dressed appropriately, make sure that you do on Saturday. Same thing. Nice conditions. It will be sunny, but as we head into Sunday morning, we could see the possibility for some near freezing conditions on the North Shore. So something to keep in mind anywhere from about 34 to 32 and we'll see that on Monday as well. Let's check on traffic. It's 553 and traffic is brought to you by chip for stall. So right now we are waking up and we're still dealing with this issue of a jackknife semi truck that is near Franklin Avenue. So we're seeing those lights and you do have a lot of motion around it right now, not looking like a complete standstill. We'll take you to the map and showcase just this 23 minutes for the causeway at the moment. Looking good there. No problems as you are headed out the door. Same thing for the twin spans. We don't have any fog on the roads this morning, but it is still slick because we had all that rainfall last night and then current traffic conditions north of the lake showcasing relatively quiet conditions as well. So at the moment, no major problems out there on the roads other than that one accident. We'll keep a close look on it. All right, today's that chat. We're sharing some fun facts on this Thursday, and I'm very proud of the one that I Googled and hopefully not too many people know this already. I was shocked to find this out. There are a lot of heartbreakers here in Louisiana. Okay. You know why? Why? Because we love our shrimp. Did you know? A shrimp's heart is located in its head. Oh, I did not know that. That's a great fun fact. I must admit, I did know this because Wait, what? When, when you told me that we're doing fun facts today, I actually did a Google myself <laughs> and that was one of the ones I found. It so it must be the most oh, Googled wow. fact, I guess, it's because it's the be. first one that comes up. But yeah, so we're crushing hearts left and right year round here in Louisiana because there we love our go. shrimp and it's February. So maybe try not to crush as many shrimp this month. That is a yeah. fun fact. I would not have known that. Find something else to eat for a Valentine's Day dinner. <laughs> exactly. What about you guys? Zach, go ahead. Zach, what welcome fact? to the team. Yeah, welcome. Yeah. First have you. of all, we need more facts about you, Zach. This is still your first week here. It is. This is actually my third third day on air. So wow. I guess a fun fact about me is I actually used to live in Guam. So Ooh. my dad was in the Air Force. So we moved around basically every one to three years. Wow. And we spent a year living in Guam on an island. It's it's about 35 miles long, eight miles wide and lived on an Air Force base. Wow. Now, is this something you remember vividly? Were you older? Oh, yeah, I was in good memories. This wow. would have been seventh grade. So I had pretty good memory of it. That is very cool. Now, is that your favorite place that you lived while traveling with your dad in the Air Force? I wouldn't say favorite. It was definitely okay. the most interesting, mm -hmm. uh, definitely learning about an entirely different culture. But, you know, my favorite was probably living in Colorado. Oh, OK. This is very interesting. Nice. Colorado's well rounded, fabulous. Zach. <laughs> you are. OK, my fun fact is that I was in the curious case of Benjamin Button. No, you were not. Okay. Yes. When I was in sixth grade as a little ballerina dancing with Kate Blanchett here in New Orleans. So oh, I always go for that one because nobody really knows that that Wait, happened. We're going to have to fun. pull this up. Oh gosh. You I've can, seen that movie a million times. I did not know you were, you had a cameo in there. You can see me if you look and you know what I looked like in sixth grade, oh, which is not what goodness. I look like now, of course, but we'll have to ask for it was that a great time. Mark. Yes. <laughs> we're going to pull that up during the break. All right, we'll be right back. Good morning, everybody. I'm Bill Wood down at the National World War II Museum with the cast and director of Fly. Fly is? Fly is a play about the Tuskegee Airmen that is now at the National World War II Museum, and it's about four bands of brothers who come together to train to fly in World War II. I like your, you can hold the microphone oh, since you want you. it. All right. Yes, He's I do. coming up when we come back. All right. <laughs>
for residents in Tangibaho Parish. Here one resident described the moment the storm hit her home. Also, American Trail recall, recall organizers and the Times Picayune reached a deal in court. Find out when the names from that recall petition will be released. And the New Orleans City Council Budget Review Board will consider moving money to pay for new city programs. We'll give you the details. You're watching Good Morning New Orleans. Thanks for waking up with us. I